Fed Chair Jerome Powell's approval rating dropped to 36 percent, according to a new Gallup poll. That is the lowest reading that the poll has had for any prior Fed chair. This low vote of confidence as the Fed continues to raise rates to battle high inflation amid the threat of recession and political wrangling over the debt ceiling. Let's bring in eToro global market strategist Ben Laidler to discuss. Ben, great to have you here with us this morning to really dive into first this poll and how much of this perhaps stems from what we had seen back in 2021 and the use of the word transitory for as long as we did see that. And now even into the Fed's decision and policy pathway that acknowledges that we may enter into a recession. Yeah, I'm not sure uh, you would expect, you know, Jay Powell to see this as a popularity contest, but, you know, this is clearly a payback for 5% interest rates. But, you know, inflation is a tax on everybody. So I think, you know, give it some time. Let's get inflation down. And I think, you know, we may want to revisit those those numbers, you know, but uh, I, I think it's a sign that, you know, the economy has barely slowed yet. And yet it will, because 5% interest rates is that medicine. Uh, we're seeing a tightening of bank lending standards and financial conditions, uh, which is, is maybe, you know, just accelerating now with the regional bank scare. And now we have the sort of self-inflicted harm coming our way from uh, from the debt ceiling. I think all that's just going to combine and accelerate the slowdown that we've been sort of crying wolf on for a very long time. But I think it may finally be coming. Well, I mean, I guess to, to your point about, you know, that it's not a popularity contest, the Gallup also surveyed how people felt about the president, how they felt about Janet Yellen, not feeling good about any of it with the, the feeling that the economy is not heading in the right direction. So how much does that matter? In other words, how much does sentiment matter in terms of the feedback loop to how the economy ends up doing? Yeah, I think a lot, right? The consumer is, is two thirds of the economy. It's been the relative surprise so far. I mean, we're just coming off the first quarter where consumption grew over sort of three and a half percent. You know, the reason we're not in recession right now is because the consumer has, has, has hung on in there. Um, and again, I, I don't think we should be sort of naive about that or complacent about that. That is absolutely time limited. Um, you know, we may be buying ourselves a little bit more time, but that, you know, that slowdown is coming. Those interest rates will bite. Those consumer savings will be sort of burnt through. And I think you scratch the surface of what's going on in the consumer. And, and I think that's, you know, that, that, that's plain for many to see. What, what does that mean for a recovery on the other side? How, how long, how protracted? I mean, of course, we, we haven't even really gotten into the depths of what many bank CEOs, many economists have called for in a mild recession. But now, even if we were to think about what that pathway to recovery would look like, how long could that look like? So I think there's a big difference between the stock market and the economy. Um, you know, we've, we're hopefully going to have our sort of tenth decline in inflation, uh, you know, report, you know, tomorrow. So I think, you know, the longer the economy can hang in there whilst inflation just sort of drifts lower, um, I, I think that just buys us, you know, a little bit more time. But, you know, the labor market does need to sort of loosen up. Uh, these sort of stickier bits of inflation um, need to sort of fall. But crucially, I do think the stock market I will look through that. Uh, I don't, I, you know, the, the stock market is not the economy. The economy is full of sort of small caps and commodities, which are very underrepresented in the stock market. The stock market is full of things like tech and healthcare, which are much more sensitive to lower inflation and I would argue lower interest rates than maybe they are to, uh, uh, to the economy. So I, I think everything's been accelerated by the bank scare, by the debt ceiling. I think the slowdown is now finally coming. I think that will pull inflation down with it. That will pull forward the interest rate cuts. Um, and so I think we're definitely going to get more volatility. You know, the VIX below 20, I just think is unsustainably low. Uh, but I think for stock market investors, um, I, I think, um, you know, ultimately it's good news. Uh, ben, um, our Jen Schomburger sat down yesterday for an exclusive interview with Chicago Fed President Austin Goolsby. Um, and, you know, the loan officer survey, which came out of 2 p.m., sort of loomed large, right, and showed that there is a slowdown. Let's listen to what he said about the coming credit crunch. Well, I'm certainly getting vibes as you are uh, in, in the market and in the business context that the credit crunch or at least a credit squeeze is beginning. I think you have to say that recession is a possibility. You've got a lot of major forecasters forecasting a mild recession already for the second half of the year. So I, I think that, that that's, that's got to be on everyone's mind. And in a way, you do not land the plane nose down. 
You don't land the plane nose down. Are we in danger of landing the plane nose down, though, Ben? And and what does that mean for investors? What did you see in that inve- in that uh, credit survey as well, the loan officer survey, that maybe gave you pause? Yeah, you know, banks are tightening financial conditions. That's going to do some of the Fed's job for it. If they weren't doing it, we were probably just going to have to see more Fed hikes. Um, so you know, I, I think this is, this is all part of the same of the same mix. I mean, we've got the lagged effect of these 5% interest rates, which remember, we only started raising a little over a year ago. So we've still got most of the impact of that to come. Now we've got tightening financial conditions led by the regionals, which is going to be particularly hard hit by small caps and by commercial real estate, you know, who are the, who are the big lenders from, uh, or the big borrowers from the regional banks. And again, now we have this sort of self-inflicted harm from, from the debt ceiling, which, you know, yes, it's going to get resolved, but A, it's you know, raising uncertainty right now, and the way it gets resolved is probably less government spending in the future, which again will just contribute uh, to this slowdown. Less government spending, less business spending, less bank lending perhaps. Um, ben, I want to turn to the earnings season because corporate results have mostly outpaced expectations. They typically do, though. Some strategists are saying a healing process is happening, and that's what I wrote about in today's morning brief because at the beginning of, this, of the season, going into the season, Ben, there was definitely some negative sentiment, right? A lot of pessimism here, and it hasn't been as bad. It usually isn't as bad. This S&P 500 hasn't moved that much during earnings season overall thus far. You say these positive earnings surprises are a bit of a head fake. Explain to us what you mean. Well, we're playing the normal game, right? Of yeah. Slashing earnings expectations into, into the quarter, and then we sort of jump over the or hop over the sort of lowered bar. So we play this game every quarter. This is sort of you know, maybe slightly bigger than normal, but, you know, but that's one. But two, you look at where the growth has come from this quarter, right? It, it's, it's come from consumer discretionary. It's come from industrials. It's come from the most economically sensitive bits of the market. Um, you might look at that and say, oh, wow, you know, these stocks are doing great. Let's go and buy them. I think that's absolutely the wrong message. Uh, I think this is maybe the last hurrah. If you, know, you believe, as I do, that the economy is now about to really slow, those are the sort of economically sensitive segments of the market, which I think are going to be um, where that slowdown is going to be most keenly felt. And, and what you should be looking at is actually uh, the places where growth is already slow, where expectations are already particularly low. Uh, and that's been healthcare, that's been, that's, been, that, that's been tech. These are the places with the high margins, the fortress balance sheets, and where the sort of, if you like, the hit to earnings has already been taken. That's where I will be looking um, to you know, stay invested but to reduce some risk into uh, the slowdown that I think is coming. Ben, how should investors kind of parse through what they've heard over the course of this earnings season from companies who have signaled a year of efficiency or a, a year of kind of consci- conscious cost uh, reductions or spending even, uh, or like we heard from Under Armour today, a, a year of rebuilding? When they hear things like that on earnings calls or in earnings reports, What action should they take as investors to really evaluate what this means for the long term of some of those companies? I mean, it's very bottom up and and, and very stock specific. But, you know, take tech as the example, right? The market is giving tech a free pass here uh, on the cost cutting, on sort of those re-engineering initiatives because they're doing it for a position of relative strength with fortress balance sheets and very high profit margins and underlying sort of secular growth. And... You know, after having lived through the sort of pandemic boom and, and the, the hiring extravaganza, they have the fat, the fat to cut. Um, so that, I think, is a good story. I think there are, you know, other segments out there which may be, a, you know, structurally more challenged, uh, where, you know, the levers to be pulled are less obvious and more difficult. Ben, great to have you here with us this morning. A lot to track as we're about 20 minutes away from the opening bell. Itoro, global market strategist Ben Laidler, thanks so much for joining us this morning.